Welcome to the video where I explain a few of the basic concepts of the JPA specification that you can use to read and write data from the database. This is part two of the video around uh, the Jakarta EE9 JPA one. In the first one, we have set up the database connection and we saw a few options for reading data and using converters. In this part, I will go deeper into writing data, the parent-child relations and some performance aspects you need to be aware of. So let's switch back to our demo application again. So as you remember, we created a company object here, uh, which we annotated with entity so that it can be persisted to the database. But now in the next step, we want to write a new entry of that instance to the database. So we have added here a method, a endpoint at our YAXRS resource where we can post some company information. And then we want to, of course, insert that, that data into the database. Since that ID is not known externally, uh, the user who is submitting a new company should not know what the new ID should be. So that should be a automatic generated value. So we need to specify here a way that JPA itself generates a value. And that can be done through the generated value annotation. In most cases, this is enough. And especially when you are using it with a empty database uh, because then the system itself knows how to how to generate the next ID value or it can use for instance uh, the auto increment fields uh, which are available within the MySQL database. In our case uh, we need to do something specific uh, but you can also use it uh, in your situation. Instead of just relying on the generated value we specify how that generated value needs to be created. Uh, that can be using, for instance, uh, for the Oracle database, uh, the sequences that you have, or here in this case, I say that we uh, will have a additional table uh, called um, ID gem, where the latest value um, is kept uh, so that the system can increment it by each one. And since we have already entries, uh, we say that it needs to start with number 10 and not with number 1, because number 1 and number 2 is already taken with our sample data. So how can we write and uh, how can we insert then the record in, uh, the Java object into a record? That is again done with, with that um, entity manager, with that entity manager where we just say persist. Uh, it takes a standard POJO class, eh, an instance of the class, and it saves it to the database. We can also return that value immediately because that value is updated with the primary key which um, is generated. So um, by returning it, we get the value back which is actually inserted in the database eh, because you know several databases has the options um, of triggers that can change values or um, in this case the ID is generated. So then we have the latest version of the database available um, in our return method. We don't need to specify any transactions eh, because as you remember we have that add transactional here which means that the transaction is automatically committed um, at the end of the method. So let's try it out. The application is generated again. We can redeploy the application within the server. And then we can post some information to that endpoint uh, with curl. And so we say a post uh, as a method. We specify the URL and as content type, uh, which is JSON, we specify here only the name. You see, we only have the name. We don't specify the ID. If we insert that, if we execute that, then the insertion is done into the database. As you can see, I get the ID 10. It is assigned the ID number 10. And um, the endpoint now has also a method for retrieving all data within the company, just as we did with employee, so that you can see that we 
um, not only have those two fields and uh, those two records which were um, uploaded within the within the default data but also we have added here now our um, additional record let's cover now a next topic within this jpa overview and that's the parent child relations entity here but we also have that company entity so employees are uh, linked to a company and we can specify that um, here with saying that uh, there is a private company called company um, property uh, within that employee object that we have defined it's not a standard column yeah, so it is uh, some specific relation within the database so we specify here that there uh, is a many-to-one relation uh, from um, this employee to a company uh, there is also the one-to-many annotation which you can use within the company but it's not recommended because um, the performance can sometimes be um, not optimal uh, and so to remember what you need to use uh, is, is it now one to many or many to one and you can always think about there are many employees uh, for one company so many is here uh, related to the employees so you need to start with the um, many one the column is also um, changed now uh, because we need to specify a joint column annotation uh, which defines the name of the um, database field where this relation is stored and it's, that's also the foreign key relation within the database uh, from the employee table to the company table if we look again uh, for that all employees um, method then you see that we do are just selecting um, as we saw for the companies and select the entire table so let's see what um, what result that give if you run this on the server we package the application and we deploy it and then we can call through the curl f with um, the employee endpoint we can um, request all employees and as you see uh, we have now here we have here the information about the about the employee itself but you see there is also here an object for the company and you see uh, for each um, employee instance we have there a company one but looking at the log now uh, because we have that detailed information uh, we have that property there that eclipse link should write out every um, action that it does you will see something interesting looking at the log we see uh, for instance here that eclipse link says that he will read that um, uh, execute that query and uh, that select from um, from the em em employee um, object actually um, perform this sql query and then we see that he launches another query to read the information from the company so for each unique company that we have um, in our result it will launch a additional query this is known as the n plus one select problem so um, in case you have a query here with uh, 100 different companies for the employees you will end up executing 101 queries to the database which is of course um, not ideal uh, in in most production systems so how can we work um, around that um, performance issue here so if you look here at our definition um, we have that company we have that many to one definition and it says that it needs to fetch that company information eagerly so although maybe we don't use it um, it is always retrieved you can change that to lazy but then you don't have that information available immediately and um, you can end up with a object that does not have the company information and at the moment that you um, want to access it then of course it tries to read it from the database but there is no longer a connection available so instead of um, uh, instead of just doing it uh, with multiple queries as we have seen it um, you can always um, here say that 
it needs to um, join and retrieve that company information within the same select. <clears throat> so we can say join fetch join fetch the e dot company. So with this statement, we instruct the JPA to create a query that um, immediately select also the company, uh, the company information from the company table. So let's see how that looks um, in the um, in the log. And you see that he now creates another query instead of that uh, just selecting all the records from that employee table. He creates now a other query where he selects from the table, where he selects from the company table and the employee table. Well, this is the JPA version, but here um, you see the version um, which is executed on the, data, on the database. It selects from both tables. He, it performs the correct join between the two tables, which means that the database is only queried once and then um, it is using a existing object as you can see it reuses every time that same company um, object for all the different records so that way you can have much more uh, performant queries uh, so that's a, a thing that you need to be aware of that in the case that you are using here that um, many to one that you either use the lazy one but then you need to make sure that you don't use it or that you um, are using that joint fetch option and the last aspect what we will cover here in this video is how you can restrict the records that you're retrieving from the database again you're restricting the java objects that you are retrieving so we are going to use the create query for that again. We also put the select keyword where we select from the employee entity. But this time we are going to put a restriction, eh? so where, and we specify a condition. And in this case, we only want to get the employees of a certain company, not uh, all employees as we did uh, in this other method. So we can say e.company, uh, because as I mentioned already a few times, we are using the values, uh, the property names that we uh, are using within Java. And as you remember, we have here within that employee, we have here that company variable. So that's the one we are using here. And then we are specifying here that we uh, want to have a restriction on the ID so which is equals to that company ID. Placeholders here are now uh, named placeholders, not as with uh, JDBC, uh, plain JDBC, where you have just a question mark and you need to do it as in a numbered uh, fashion. And this is of course much easier because you can have a name and later on you um, give this parameter value a value and then um, it is um, used when the query is executed. The JPA system is clever enough to figure out that it does not need to go to that company table itself. So he just queries the employee table and looks uh, for that uh, value that we specify here on the company ID for a key value. So it does not make the join. Although uh, remember that maybe you should do join fetch um, of that of that um, table because otherwise uh, you can maybe read multiple times uh, from the database. Again we make this uh, query um, type safe by saying that it returns a um, employee entry uh, for each record and we can assign that to a variable, a variable named query. And in the next step then we can define uh, the parameter, parameter company ID, he automatically um, detects that I have that parameter and he sees that I have here all that company ID, so my ID is helping here a lot. And then again, 
just as before, I can say um, return the result list uh, based on that query. So here, there are of course a lot of other possibilities uh, for restrictions, but here we restrict the returned objects to those uh, of, of a certain company. So now we are at the end of our demo and our basic demonstrations of, EAPA, of GPA. There are a lot of more features. Uh, we only covered uh, a few of them, like um, configuring the database, define the mapping, read and write records, um, uh, etc. and some performance tips. There are many more topics within JPA, so have a look at the specification or other examples on the internet that explain those details. Thank you for watching. Bye.